Well, my talk is probably not going to be as educational, <laughs> but hopefully it'll be insightful. And um, I am, as uh, Alfred said, I'm Paul Samper, and I, you know, I came here to Ross about a year and a half, almost two years ago. And I never had the opportunity to work at a institution like this. This has been a big, big learning curve for me. I worked at different universities before, the faculty, and I spent most of my time, 21, 22 years, as a practice owner, where I did my things, I made the decisions, I called the shots, I hired people, I fired people, and nobody would question me. And then I came to Ross. And it's been a very, very uh, good experience for me. And I came to Ross because I wanted to contribute to the profession from a different angle. Most of you know that you know, I'm an equine theragenologist. I published a whole bunch of papers. I travel the world looking at horses or teaching or giving seminars on equine reproduction. I've written three books on equine reproduction. So I'm pretty accomplished in my field of expertise. But I've also had the opportunity to work in a lot of different sections or segments of the profession. I was like all of you here, I was a student at some point, where all the tribulations that we go through veterinary school, then I was an intern, then I was a resident, then I was a resident veterinarian, then I was an associate veterinarian, then I was on the faculty of a couple of veterinary schools, then I was also a uh, worked in the industry for a company called Sexing Technologies down in Texas. And then I've been a practice owner. So I thought if I start to look at all the things that have forged what I am today, it's probably because of all these different experiences that I've had over my career. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool if somebody would want to share some of the things that, you know, where you had failures and where you had successes? And, you know, we go through life as a roller coaster, but we hope that the roller coaster is like this and not like this. So, one of the things that I really had to learn here at Ross is to apply myself and develop a thick skin. When I worked in my practice, if somebody said something I didn't want to hear, I could just elect to fire that client or fire that person or not to talk to them or call them on the phone and send them to heck. Say, you know, there is no huge, huge repercussions. Well, that has not been the case here. Even though we as faculty and as administrators at a university put our hearts out to try to do the best we can, sometimes those things are not recognized because that is, from a student perspective, that's what we are hired to do. So, you know, if you do a good job, that's what you're supposed to do. But when you don't, and when you have, you make a mistake or you disappoint somebody, then it becomes a real issue. And people are very quick to criticize and, uh, you know, I have to admit that I've been blessed because there's a lot of people, a lot of you guys, a lot of the scout people that have 
come back and give me a pat on the back and said thank you for all you do so which is which is great but there's always been a little bit of issues with we don't do things right and one of the things that I want to ask this question not to get an answer but just to make you reflect is how many times do we react to something to a situation that then we regret how we reacted to that situation and it could be an immediate re an immediate regret or it could be a regret that takes maybe a day maybe a couple of days and then you have to go and put your head down and say yeah I did really screw up but the important thing for me has been to try to decide what are the triggers that make me react like that. And I think those are the important, the most important thing is to say, okay, when I get my button pushed the wrong way, I have to hold back and not start to engage in a fight, not try to escalate the fight because that is not going to take us anywhere. But the important thing for me has been to see, okay, what are those buttons? Where are those buttons? And I, like any veterinarian or any veterinary student, you know, I'm a type A, I'm sort of perfectionist, I want everything to go right. So when I get criticized, I don't like that. But the message that I want to give you is, you gotta know yourself you got to know yourself to avoid those kind of things. And knowing yourself has two letters. EQ. Have you ever heard of EQ? EQ, which is the emotional intelligence, has two parts. It has a part that is your self-awareness, how you know yourself, how you see yourself, how you feel about yourself, and then it has the other part, which is the social awareness, how you react to other people within the context of your group. How do you interact with other people, even though they might be pushing buttons that you want, don't want to be pushed? So to be able to do that, I think that is the most important thing for us because as veterinarians, we are going to succeed both personal and professional, professionally if we establish a circle of relationships. And those relationships are gonna be our colleagues, our superiors, our boss, the staff, the clients, the patients, the family, everybody that we have to interact with. And we know that happiness is determined by the quality of our relationships. But the biggest thing is that at the core of all those relationships around there is you. It's how we deal with ourselves, how we see ourselves, and we can blame everything on everybody, on everything around us when things are not going right. But the biggest thing is we have to have that mirror to be able to go and say, what role do I, what role do you play in the situations when things are not going right. So, you know, keep that in mind because I think that it's very important to have a good relationship with yourself. And once you have that down, then everything becomes easy. But if you don't, then the raw the road gets real rocky. And then the roller coaster starts to go down. So 
thank you, Alfred, for giving me the opportunity. And uh, I appreciate, you know, being able to talk to you guys. Thanks.